Colette Stryker. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and I'm the co-founder of MAP. Here I want to present you with a QEEG study of a height phobia that we neutralized using MAP. It is a breakthrough method in the field of psychology and peak performance. We actually train the subconscious mind to find and neutralize painful memories and as we have had hundreds of cases along the last four years and had so many good results, we wanted to make sure that the brain was rewiring itself. So we hired a neuroscientist and we also asked clients who wanted to come forward and help out in the study. Here is the story of Jane. So Jane accepts to do a pretest in real life situation. She has an intense height phobia. So we go to Houston in the very high building called Galleria. It's a shopping center. And in the center of it, there is a lobby. So we go to the seventh floor of the building. Jane was supposed to go to the railing and look down into the lobby. Now, as soon as we get out of the elevator, she is in absolute panic. She, she cannot stand it, so she rushes back to the elevator. So now we have the proof that yes, she is really afraid of heights and we go to the clinic where there will be a QEG operated at that time. Q means quantitative electroencephalogram. So it's a study of the brain waves. And quantitative means there is a computer that is going to analyze all the information that is recorded during the session. So in order to do a QEG, we need to put a hat on the head of the patient. You see the red dots? These are receptors of brain waves. Receptors send the information to the computer and the computer records during the entire session. And then there is an analysis that's being done by the neuroscientist. So now a MAP session itself is a three-step process. First, there is a prerequisite step which is an initiation session that Jane had before she even went to the Galleria. So she was all set to receive her first MAP session. A MAP session, as I said, has three steps. So the first one is to assess the level of discomfort from 0 to 10 around the issue. Number two, I give a command to the subconscious mind. Number three, the brain is rewiring itself and we are waiting for the processing to happen. And then again, step one, we reassess, I give another command, we wait again. So that's the cycle. Now step one, we are going to listen to Jane's assessment of her own fear. I let you listen to that. What number from zero to 10, 10 being the worst fear, what number do you get? 10, I'm really like, really scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna fall. <sighs> On the floor, you just, yes, I'm just open under my feet and I'm just going to fall. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. So you have noticed how Jane, you could hear her breathing, but I could really feel her really panicked at that time. She was extremely anxious. So I begin to give some commands. The first command, the anxiety drops from 10 to 6. That means four points in two minutes. Then six minutes later, Jane is now at a three. So the anxiety has dropped another three points. And then I give another command and she's now at a one or a two. So it seemed that the session would be short. And that happens a lot in our sessions with clients. But sometimes the anxiety and the phobia is very complex. And that's exactly what happened. Here we have uh, Jane who actually has a very complex phobia. Her anxiety goes back to 4, which is not a 10 as we had at the beginning, but it went back up. And she had fear after fear that we needed to treat one after the other. So there was fear of floor shaking, then she, she felt like if she was to look down into the lobby she would be attracted to the floor. She was afraid the building would crash on her. Then at one point she felt that she might be too light and pass through the concrete. And then she saw herself upside down hanging in the air to the balcony and there were more than that. So 
after each fear we treated, I gave a command and usually it took a few minutes and she was doing better on that one, but then there was another one and another one. So after a short hour, it was about 50 minutes, Jane is now down to a one or a zero. So let's listen to her comments. Oh, it's really better. Yeah, I feel like I could look over be at a one or a zero. So immediately after the map session with the QEG analysis, we went back to the Galleria to test the result. So about 20 minutes later, we are at the top of the building, again at the seventh floor, the same place exactly. Now Jane is able to get out of the elevator, walk to the railing, she stops a little bit, then she goes directly to the railing, she even leans forward, at one point she smiles, she looks down and she's really happy that she can do so and she opens even her arms and really lean forward. So this is extraordinary, she's really happy and we have good results. So now all we have to do is to wait one week for our neuroscientists to study and do the research to analyze the information to find out what really happened in our brain. So we're back at the QEEG center for the results. And our neuroscientist, Dominique Di Loreto, is specialized in anxiety and clinical supervisor at the Unique Mind Care Clinic here in Houston. He analyzes the results. And what he says, that we can see that the subject showed significant changes. Now look at the red zone of the little drawings here. They represent change in the brain. But it was across the entire brain in all frequencies, alpha, beta, theta, delta, gamma. Actually, there were 40 different frequencies and all of them showed really significant changes. The increase in delta Dominique searches and analyzes that detail and finds out that it comes from the limbic area, which is the unconscious area of the brain. And according to Dominique, it indicates that there was encoding and retrieval of unconscious information going on. The increase in theta brainwave is derived from the hippocampus and is actively reorganizing memories. The increase in alpha brainwave was related to memory retrieval, accessing information and or reorganizing of the connections in the brain. And it sounded exactly what was going on. So there was also an increase in beta and gamma frequencies that could be related to cortical activation, which means the cortex, the outside surface of your brain is really activated and it's working with the unconscious the deeper part of the brain to repair trauma or phobia. So now Dominic explains that three areas of the brain were altered on all the 40 frequencies. And I want you to listen to what Dominic explains right here. You basically have three structures the entire way that are altered, which to go and have 40 hertz for what y'all were doing, it looks like that's what we were going for. Okay, yes. you've got a memory system that is increasing its activity, probably trying to change, um, change memories, working with an emotion and a pain center that's basically trying to probably calm you down, I would imagine, and basically help to regulate the emotion connected with those memories. You've got a decrease in one of the main hubs that you know, goes into the limbic system. So that is what, <laughs> that right there just sums up why, I mean, I think that it's extremely promising because you saw that the only increases that I could even measure cortically were all in areas related to memory, emotion, and regulation. All right, so let's look at it in details. There was an increased activity in the parahippocampal gyrus and it is due to the accessing and reorganizing of memories because in the hippocampus gyrus is where memories have been known to be recorded. There was an increased activity in the insula. The insula is about reorganizing memories around pain. It's connected to pain, emotional response, stress, fear response. 
So there was activity going on in the insula, in all this painful area. Then there was less activity in the preconius, which is the hub between the cortex, the outside of the brain, and the limbic, the internal core part of the brain that is connected to the unconscious. So because there was less activity within the preconius at the cortex level, that means there was more activity in the limbic area, in the unconscious emotional brain. So there were a lot of things going on in the unconscious brain. So now let's listen to uh, Dominic's comments on the pattern is so. Because what is important as you're going to hear is that it's not just in one frequency that he saw those shifts in those areas of the brain, but in all of them. And let's listen to what he has to say. All in the same place, first four frequencies. I mean, and that's the other thing is the results were so um, just about the same. And here we go, hanging out in that hippocampus again. So just about every one of those images is right in there. A couple of different areas too, but for the most part to be that consistent is pretty, pretty impressive. And so you can't necessarily get caught up in just one frequency that had one place off. What you really want to look for is patterns. And so the fact that both of those, you had decreases one through four hertz in the percutaneous, and then you also saw increases in the hippocampus and the insula basically the rest of the way out. Here's your insula again. You're in your insula again. I mean, it's... I was absolutely floored when I, when I saw these results. I mean, I thought they're super impressive. Yes, I hope you really enjoyed this explanation. This was very important for us because at that point, we really focused 100% of our attention uh, Valentin Stryker and I, both of us as a team, we did much more work and we created the institute and everything because we knew it was worth it. It was working, we had the proof and that was fabulous. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you soon in one of those presentations. Thank you.